Bienvenue, bienvenido, and welcome to another episode of me talking about things that I don't really understand. And today we're looking at French gastronomy, its appeal, its history, some of its weirder elements, and why it's known today as being some of the best food in the world, which obviously is debatable. It's not for everyone. But then again, nothing is loved by everyone except for Keanu Reeves. Oh. Keanu, we love you. Regardless of the actual taste of the food, which we'll get to, French cuisine is regarded as one of the most prestigious and respectable cuisines in the world for a reason. It's emphasis on fresh ingredients, it's presentation, and it's history. Personally, I think French cuisine is delicious. When I first moved to Paris, I gained a lot of weight, and it wasn't so much because of what I was eating, but more so how much of it I was eating, because it's just that good. Now, obviously, the French also enjoyed fatty, processed, and unhealthy foods. They aren't immune to it, but the culture does tend to stray from it more than than, say the US. A prime example is how places like McDonald's operate in France. McDonald's, known here as Magdo, had a really hard time making its way to France. The company didn't really believe they had a market here in the country of gastronomy. Um, I'm sorry, what's this? Uh, that's a burger. A what? A hamburger? It's a steak with uh, lettuce, bread. Huh. Well, it just looks like a terrible sandwich. <laughs> uh, what's this? Is, is this wine? <laughs> no, no, that's uh, Coke. La Coke? You put cocaine in my wine? What? what? No. Nice. Eventually, thanks to the initiative of French businessman Raymond Daillon, the first McDo opened in 1979 in Créteil. But here's the thing, you won't find the same burgers in a McDonald's and in a McDo. Anyone who's eaten at both will agree they just don't taste the same. Although their menu is essentially the same, other than some French-inspired elements like the McBaguette. Yes, that's real. And the names changing, like the Quarter Pounder changing to Royal Cheese. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. The ingredients are not the same. And that's mostly due to the stricter laws in France and Europe about GMOs, food additives, and even the farmers' rights. France has even gone as far as doing a rebranding from the classic McDonald's red to green to symbolize their sustainable method. Sustainable. Let's, let's just say more so than in the US. And this is just one example of how the food culture and industry in France differs from other places in the world. Let's get into the history of French cuisine. French cuisine, as we know, it can be traced back to the courts of medieval France. Nobility dined on multi-course meals composed of wild game, meat, fruit, and grains. Seasoning symbolized status because salt wasn't cheap and spices were imported from very far away. Whereas the peasants ate diets high in vegetables and legumes that were not seasoned. Dishes like ratatouille and cassoulet are still referred to as peasant dishes or in French, la paysan, and that's pretty much the entire plot of Ratatouille. From these medieval feasts, French cuisine began to take shape, and in 1651, François-Pierre Lavarenne published the first French cookbook titled Le Cuisinier François. Hey, look what I made! Oh, cool! W what is it? It's a cookbook. Oh, yeah, what's that? Well, it's a book that you use to cook. Is that a book that you can eat? Are you serious? This actually inspired many chefs to record their work and cookbooks went viral. By the 17th century, French food became a model for other cuisines, mainly because of Louis XIV's magnetism and the allure of his new playground, Versailles. And cookbooks on cuisine bourgeoise became popular. Also around this time, the French started to use forks. Look what I made! Oh, what is that? It's called a fourchette. For what? It's used to eat. Oh, cool, so you can eat that too? Dude, seriously? In pre-revolutionary France, the only place to eat outside the home was in a tavern or an inn. Then came the French Revolution in 1789. Finally, everyone was allowed to eat well and all these chefs of the nobility had to find new employment because their bosses no longer had heads. Thus, many of these cooks who had previously worked for members of the nobility opened up restaurants to the public. What emerged from the rubble of the revolution was the restaurant and the restaurateur, where the chef is accountable to his clients and works to gain favorable critiques to attract more patrons. And the concept of serving food without a fixed schedule at an individual table and offering a choice of dishes, the price of which was indicated in advance on the outside of the building. Then, in the 1800s, chef baker Marie Antoine Antoine, not to be confused with Marie Antoinette, who was the one who ate the cake, began teaching French cooking as a sophisticated art form that required technique and precision, and in his recipe manuals, made French cuisine more accessible to the masses. By 1873, the world's first culinary school was created in France by chef Georges-Auguste Escoffier, known as the king of chefs and also the chef of kings. Much of Escoffier's technique was based on that of Marie Antoine. It was said that he revolutionized the fundamentals of French cooking and is the father of the Brigade de Cuisine system, which features a solid organizational system and hierarchy, giving kitchens a military-style ethic to deliver efficient and effective service that is used widely today in most dining experiences. 
Yes, chef! Lest we forget the contribution of our favorite chef, Julia Child, who helped to popularize French cooking at home with her cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. All right, now that we've covered the history of it all, let's talk about the actual food they typically serve in France. Obviously, it's not all just croissants, wine, cheese, and cigarettes. Here are some of the most common and popular dishes served in France. Let's start with the Boeuf Bourguignon, known in the US as Boeuf Bourguignon. Boeuf Bourguignon. Ah. Uh. Which is a beef stew served with red wine, mushrooms, and bacon. Yummy! A French classic made famous by the one and only Julia Child. Cocovin is another of Julia Child's signature dishes. The name translates to rooster in wine, even though traditionally hens are used because they're more succulent. Rich is an understatement when talking about pomme aligo. The dish combines mashed potatoes with almost half their weight in cheese. Agitating the potatoes well while cooking helps release their starch, which combined with the cheese, makes for a fantastically gooey Ooh. result. And I actually learned this the hard way, but don't drink too much water while you're eating this because the cheese in your stomach will actually expand. So if you think you've eaten the right amount and then you start drinking water, it will expand in your stomach and that's no fun at all. Confit de canard. Confit de canard is a tasty French duck dish, although it can be substituted for goose or pork. Today, this dish is famous all over France, although you'll find the best variations in the Gascony region. Confit means that the meat is marinated in salt, garlic, and thyme for around 36 hours and then slow cooked in its own fat at low temperatures. This is apparently a healthier alternative to frying. It doesn't sound very healthy, but it is just apparently. As I mentioned earlier, these two are known as peasant dishes because of the legumes and vegetables. It is wild to me that they call something a peasant dish when it's so widely loved. We have a cassoulet, a comfort dish of white beans stewed slowly with meat. And of course, ratatouille, which is vegetables shallow fried and then layered in a casserole dish that is then baked in the oven. This can be served as a side dish, an appetizer, or a main course. Look at that, it can do anything. And now for our desserts. Hooray. Let's start with the tartata. According to culinary legend, tartata started life as a mistake. In 1898, hotelier Stéphanie Tata was making a traditional apple pie when she accidentally left the apple was cooking in sugar and butter for too long, which sounds like an amazing mistake to me. In a hurry to try to rescue the dessert, she put the pastry base on top of the burning fruit in the oven. She supposedly served the upside down tart to her guests at Hotel Tata, which turned into the hotel's signature dish. Amazing. And of course, French desserts would be nothing without the incomparable souffle au chocolat. The word souffle comes from the French verb to blow. Not that kind. And as the name suggests, this is a light, airy dessert. It is a staple on most dessert menus. The crispy, chocolatey crust lets the creamy chocolate ooze for a decadent surprise. <laughs> However, souffles don't have to be sweet. Cheese souffles are just as delicious if you want something a little salty. Now, sometimes when experiencing other cultures, some of the food may not be what you're used to. It doesn't mean you won't like it, but it can sometimes be hard to wrap our heads around. And France is no stranger to unique types of foods, like l'escargot. To those who think they're dirty or dangerous? The answer is no, at least not if you eat them from a reputable source. I mean, don't eat an escargot you find on the street. According to legend, the first escargot de Bourgogne, or Burgundy snails, appeared in 1814 during a visit to France by the Russian Tsar Alexander. He was to dine with one of Napoleon's chief diplomats, but they were running late, and the restaurant was out of food. The innkeeper had to think on his feet, so he rushed out to the garden where some snails caught his eye, and he quickly transformed them into a meat dish. And voila! A French delicacy was born. To eat escargot, you'll need a special plate, snail tongs to hold it, and a special fork to pluck them out. Now let's be honest, these French snails are merely supports for the sauce. The sauce is what you're after, which is generally heavy in garlic. Now, there are other slimy edible creatures we eat here in France, like the cuisse de grenouille, or in English, frog legs, which honestly just tastes like Chicken. And finally, we have foie gras, or fatty liver. One of the most controversial staples of French cuisine, banned in some parts of the world, geese are actually force-fed to fatten their livers, which obviously causes harm and sometimes even death. Fortunately, though, it doesn't taste very good. It's, it tastes really good. It's so hard to stop eating. I feel so bad. Oh no. Next, we have the steak tartare. Steak tartare is ground beef, like beef, and it's not cooked. Like, that's that's it. That's It's raw, raw beef. One of the most popular dishes in France, uncooked meat. Finally, we have the boudinois, which is generally eaten once the cooler weather comes around. And it's often sauteed in butter with apples. Mm. I'm kind of torn by this dish. I grew to like it as an adult, especially with the size, but I mean, not to sugarcoat it, but it's pretty much just cooked blood. Appetizing, I know. It's, it's, it's literally just a sauce. It's a blood sausage. I mean, it's a sausage with blood that's cooked. 
and I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. It sounds not appetizing at all. Hey, sorry I'm late. Um, where are the menus? Oh, no worries. I took care of ordering. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? I mean, oh, no. <laughs> How do I say this? Sometimes you order things that I, I'm not a huge fan of. Oh, come on, don't worry. I have ordered perfectly. You will love everything. Are you a fan of escargot? What's that? Snails. Oh, no. Oh, that's uh, unexpected. Um, uh, what about steak tartare? Oh, yeah, no, that's perfect. I love steak. J just make sure it's well done. Oh, well, no, it's, it's, it's actually rare. It's, it's, it's very, 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 it's, it's very rare. Oh. Oh, you know what, maybe we'll swap the frog legs for some chicken nuggets? Yes. Now let's look at some specialties from different places around France. Because it's not just Paris. In Brittany, they have cider and crepes. The mascot of Bretagne is arguably the apple. Around 600 varieties of apples grow in this one region of France alone. Locals drink farm fermented Breton cider with near religious fervor. Brittany also deserves recognition for inventing sweet and savory, super delicate pancakes. An early version of the crepe made from buckwheat which was first prepared in 13th century Brittany. Now moving on to Normandy, where they have camembert and scallops known as Saint-Jacques de Normandie. These scallops are a region's specialty and have been awarded the Label Rouge, which essentially guarantees their quality. The emerald green grasses of the Normandy countryside also produce rich cow's milk, which in turn goes into some of the world's most beloved cheeses, le camembert. Created in Normandy in the 18th century, it was famously provided to French soldiers as part of their rations during the First World War. Yeah, it's pretty recent. Next on to Corsica, where they are known for their charcuterie. This island encircled by the Mediterranean Sea and dotted with rugged mountains is technically a part of France, but Corsicans don't consider themselves French. Most of them speak Corsu, a Tuscan dialect. The majority of livestock raised on the island is free range and pigs, which are abundant, are sometimes bred with wild boar, fed a diet of chestnuts, and then transformed into salami and ham. Gently transformed. Next on to Auvergne, Rhône Alpes, where they have the fondue and the raclette. This alpine region of France, known for its majestic landscape and idyllic villages nestled among the snowy mountaintop, is also famous for its melted cheese. Another melted cheese dish this region might have borrowed from the Swiss is raclette, which means to scrape. A wheel of salty cow's milk cheese is partially melted, brought to the table, scraped onto a plate, and served with potatoes and ham anything delicious. Next on to Le Grand Est, la quiche Lorraine. This iconic breakfast dish might be described as an egg tart filled with bacon, onions, and broccoli. It originated during the Middle Ages in Lorraine. But we can't talk about Le Grand Est without talking about la choucroute alsacienne. Choucroute is essentially just a plate filled with things that are delicious to eat, like meats and potatoes, and they also add cabbage to make it seem healthy. Now, obviously, these are just a few examples of some specialties around France. There are so many different cultures and regions and specialties specialties in France, and if we went over all of their different foods, we'd be here for a very long time. Regarding French cuisine, I can see why so many people consider it to be so fancy. From their long history with food and how it's prepared, it's easy to see how French cuisine has dominated the food industry. I mean, they made a Pixar movie about it, come on. And let's be honest, just speaking French makes a person sound fancy. Still, the thoughtfulness, the presentation, the techniques, and the sourcing of fresh local ingredients elevates the food and makes the cuisine renowned as one of the fanciest of foods. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what your favorite French food is. Au revoir!